Okay, so our uh, next speaker is Guillaume Abal, Ambal, Thanks. and he's, go he's going to talk about certified abstract machines for skeletal semantics. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so this talk is about a framework called skeletal semantics, and well, I guess it's later for the abstract machines. So all of this is about formalizing programming languages. As an example, we have our old friend Lambda Calculus here with call by value and closures. And so if you want to define properly this language, well, it's small enough that you can just grab a piece of paper and write all of this. You can say that, well, we expect variables, and then you say that your terms are variables or application or lambda abstraction, things like that, and yada, yada, yada. And for the semantics, you give inference rules. But for bigger languages like OCaml, JavaScript, or something that is really noticeably more complicated than a small calculus like that, uh, it's getting really annoying to do it by hand on a piece of paper. Uh, first, because you have really complicated inference rules, and second, because you do not get help from, from your computer to try to certify tools for your language or things like that. So it would be better to have some kind of formalization of your language on a computer. And so there's two ways to do it. You can either take your favorite assistant, like Cook, Isabel, Agda, pick your poison, or there's a few frameworks that are starting to pop up, pop up to try to help programmers to define their languages and provide tools for free. So uh, the next talk is about K-Framework, which is probably the biggest one out there, so you'll probably have more details in 20 minutes. And we are using skeletal semantics. So the idea of the framework is that we have a small meta-language in which we can define other programming languages. So the semantics of the thing you are interested in can be written using the syntax of the meta-language. So you take your language, you have to yourself write it in this meta-language scale, and then the point is we have an OCaml implementation that uh, can read this definition file as input and produce things for free. You can have a coq definition for free, you can have an interpreter, debugger, you can have modifications or simplifications, uh, ACC forms, things like that. So for our call by value lambda calculus, that's what you would, uh, you would have to write to get the same result as previously. So on the left, syntax, well, you can say, just like before, that you have uh, identifiers, so variables, but you don't care how they, are, how they are implemented. You can have algebraic data types, like anyone knows how to do that. Uh, you can leave some things abstracted away, so like environments in lambda calculus, usually you do not really care how they are implemented. You just need to know how to write uh, something in the environment and how to read it, and that's it. And so the important part is that you can define the semantics of your language with this. So for the evaluation of lambda terms, you say that if you want to evaluate a lambda term within an environment, well, here's the definition, here's the semantics. And the, I guess, weird thing about skeletal semantics is we have something called the branching, which is a bit general. It's just a way to list several possible behaviors. So it's a non-deterministic choice between several behaviors. And we can get something deterministic by combining it with uh, destructive lets. So when you see the line uh, let lam xt equals l, what happens is that if the lambda term l looks like a lambda abstraction, well, it will work as intended, and x and t will be bound as expected. And so by, with this branching, well, you can list all three possible behaviors of evaluating lambda terms and get something. So up to this point, well, everything looks fine, but we, I mean, all of this only makes sense if the meta language itself makes sense, because otherwise, well, it's all for nothing. And so what we have is we have a semantics of the meta language defined with inference rules, of course, because <laughs> we have to start somewhere. And so we have a semantics for the scale meta language in big step, which is really nice, it's readable, it's nice for proofs, but the problem with big step semantics is that there are some limitations. And notably, you can't really execute a big step semantics, which means that you went through all the trouble of defining all of this, <coughs> and now your computer still doesn't know to run a lambda, uh, lambda term or to execute something, which is a bit disappointing. And so the way to solve this is to have other semantics of the meta language that you can execute or have more information from. And so the way to do it usually is abstract machines, which has 
which are operational semantics, but detailed enough that you can give them to your computer and accept your computer to be able to do the computation. And so we have a big sub-semantics, we want an abstract machine, and well, gladly for us, there's people like Danvi that already thought about how to do this, so we don't have to just tinker randomly and hope it works. And so there's known methods to do this, and we apply it to our meta language. So I'm just going to skip forward and jump through the explanation of what we are doing. But after this transformation, we get an abstract machine for our meta language. And so the Latin that you saw previously are explained this way in abstract machine. So, right. An abstract machine is like a reduction semantics between states that represent uh, snapshots of a virtual computer evaluating something. So the way to read the first rule is to say that if you have some kind of imaginary computer computing let p equal s1 in s2 with some additional information, here kappa is a continuation, uh, so some kind of a to-do list. What the computer should do is focus on s1 and then put everything else in the to-do list, in the continuation of we will see later. And then there's all the rules explaining how you can uh, use this continuation and things like that. So this thing, this line is detailed enough that you can give this to your computer and hope it understands what to do. Problem is, we still can't run this uh, semantics because it is still non-deterministic in the sense that uh, the rule for branchings, as I said, um, a branch is just a non-deterministic choice between several behaviors. And at this point, the computer still doesn't know how to do this. And so the next step is to have another abstract machine, but <laughs> a deterministic one, <laughs> where we kind of tinker a bit in the middle of the transformation to get something deterministic. And well, I'm going to pass on the details, but the idea is that, well, we, when we reach a branch, this time we tell the computer explicitly, so we are modifying the semantics, we say explicitly, take the first branch, always. Don't ask any questions, take the first branch. But we are adjoining additional informations, which I will call F, which is some kind of backtracking pile, some kind of checkpoint. And the idea is that if anything goes wrong later, you just load the checkpoint. And so if you get an anti-branching or if something goes wrong, you just go to this backtracking mode. So it's not exactly the same semantics because you take a choice, you take the first branch, but this time, hopefully, it's deterministic and it's executable. Uh, yeah, and so if we did not mess up, we should have a semantics kind of equivalent to the starting one and executable. And now the next step is to check that we did not mess up. So we define everything in Coq. The big step semantics from the, of the meta language was already defined, so it was fine. And we can add uh, definitions in Coq for the uh, non-deterministic one. And since it is non-deterministic, we have to use props and code it as a relation. And importantly, the deterministic one can be written as a function, which is important in one minute. And so we can check easily that, well, the non-deterministic one is exactly equivalent to the starting big step semantics because we just turn it around, but it's the same information. And that the deterministic one is correct in the sense that if you find a result, it's still the right result. And the point is, since the deterministic <coughs> version in Coq is a function, well, we have something wonderful in Coq is you can extract something to OCaml. So if you have a definition, a function in Coq, you just have to ask nicely, and that's it, you have an OCaml definition for free. <laughs> So we do this, and we have uh, an OCaml version of the abstract machine for the meta language, still, for the meta language. And the point is, well, you already have in scale a way to extract a Coq definition for any language written by your user, and so this one, you can also extract it via Coq extraction mechanism, plug it in here, and we can have an interpreter in OCaml for the meta language, specialized for the language you want, <laughs> but it runs. And so the point is you can have a certified interpreter for any language that you want to define in skeletal semantics. So it's a bit slow in the sense that we are simulating the meta language, but we have Coq certification that it actually runs the semantics that you expect. And the last slide, just a resume a summary of everything that happened. So we used to have some, just a big step semantics of our meta language, and the user could define something in this meta language. And what we added is two new semantics of the meta language itself that we can extract the deterministic one towards Coq so that we can plug in anything written by the user. And 
Do I have one more minute? Sure. And I did not mention it before, but we had another way of creating an interpreter, uh, no common interpreter for any language written in skeletal semantics, but it's kind of a hack in the sense that we just bypass the meta language. So I'm going to oversimplify a bit, but the idea is that a Latin in skeletal semantics is about the same thing as a Latin in Coq, uh, sorry, in OCaml. And so uh, this transformation is just kind of copy pasting what the user has defined into OCaml and hoping it works. And it does work, but since we are getting rid of the meta language, we have no certification, no guarantee that it actually works. Meanwhile, this one is, uh, well, really ineffective in the sense that it's really slow. We have something like 10 to 100 overhead. So yeah, a lot slower. But we make sure that it runs the actual semantics you expected. And yeah, that's it. Uh, are there any questions? be needed to speed up a certified compiler? Sorry, what? A certified you? interpreter. What would be needed? I don't think you can speed it up because we have this meta language that we are simulating in the sense that if you want to take, let's say, one step of lambda calculus, uh, yep, maybe I can go back to, yeah. If you want to take one step of lambda calculus, you have to map those variables, do the pattern matching, create the closure, do some substitution here. So just for one step of lambda calculus, you have dozens of steps of the meta language. And you can't really, I mean, you can gain a bit, maybe divide by two this version, but there's no hope of being competitive with something that is directly written in OCaml or C or something. But the nice part about this is that since we are simulating the meta le le level language, we just have to prove it once that it is correct, and we have this guarantee for any language inside it. So yeah, it's easier to certify, but it's less efficient. Any other yep. questions? Uh, uh, so uh, about speed, what about trying to uh, apply partial evaluation to, the, to get rid of the inter an internal uh, evaluator, like, like just having some kind of, uh, just eval compute in cock and extract that and see what happens? Would it be, what would happen? Um, hmm. I'm not sure it will change much uh, because, well, if you run eval on cock, you, I mean, the same complexity, I believe, no? Yep, the, 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 it's the same complexity, but you're, you're going to remove overhead from the, uh, the, I mean, if it's written in a, well, uh, extensional in half way, you're going to get uh, something that reduces to a simpler, more compact program. Right, but uh, once again, we are not really, uh, in Coq, you do not simulate the lambda calculus, you're really simulating yeah, the exactly, meta language. Exactly, if, if you partial, if you, <laughs> So we need to s instantiate first in Coq. Uh, I'm not sure Coq can simplify it that much, but maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> Any other question? OK, so right. let's thank our speaker again.